so this is going to be trapezius here, and that's inserting back here. So this is all rolling this way. This is rolling this way. One rhythm you can find is from here, and then look for how this is going to pick up here. We got to get this little concavity there, this little, this little shape in here. This frontal area, try to actually think of how it relates to sort of constructive curves. And then this is heavier on him. This is all the jowls. So the masseter is coming down. We got to find a way to get the, this is like, this is, this is like a big old like filet steak. So we want to feel the, the convexity of that as it makes its way up. And then we've got this having to do with the parotid gland. The parotid gland is sort of, it, it can be a little bit shaped like the ear, but it's just squishy, squishy forms, just like the submandibular glands that create saliva. But basically what I want you to do is to start getting more involved in here, right? Because you're constructing the eyes and the features so well, there's no reason you can't construct the areas around. And if you've got the structures surrounding the eye and the nose and the mouth right, it'll look like a million bucks. Keep expanding your analytical thinking outside of the features. So what I'd really like you to do is I'd really like you to pull up photos of sculptures, uh, of portraits, Roman portraits, Greek portraits, Rococo, Baroque, Renaissance, go nuts. And then just look at where the sculptors, look at where the sculptors are deciding where the curves are and where those things break down. Because sculptors are the masters of this. Sculpture is more useful than anatomy, but they're both useful. And, and for complete mastery, I think you would you would definitely need to have both. But start with the knowledge that's already out there because that's thousands of years of knowledge that has been condensed. So look at the sculptures and really look at like how they're organizing this. Try to think about what view certain curves are designed in because they're not designed in any view. This, for example, the bridge of the nose here, that's clearly designed in the front view. And then the profile, that's clearly designed in the side view. And then there's probably no other views that come into play there except for the, the contours of the bottom of the nose. That's probably done from below. So there's a certain minimum amount of views to describe each part depending on what the part is doing. So technically you only need two views. Each view gives you two degrees, right? Up, down, left, right. So the side view gives you up, down, left, right. The front view gives you up, down, left, right. That gives you three dimensions, but it depends on the part, which angle is the right angle to, to draw it from. So start thinking about that.